Would you like to start perhaps by talking about how the Commission for the Future and the New Zealand Planning Council came into being? It, it came directly out of my experience as an MP in Awarua in the early 70s. We'd just done the National Development Conference and I realised in Southland that we knew very little about the society. We had to get a lot more information and that suggested that we should be repeating the National Development Conference in a wider basis and that suggested the idea of a planning council that work, would work directly on the nation's economy and society and look at it sectorally and suggest some of the planning on an ongoing basis that we had done in the National Development Conference. But that wasn't quite enough. Given the fact that Toffler and Co had been talking about the future, it was very simple as the computer and the chip started coming into action that we really had to try and have a look further ahead, a generation ahead, even 30 or 40 years ahead. Now you could do that in any number of ways, one way is to start historically and say, here we started back in the 16th century with the scientific revolution, 18th century the industrial revolution, New Zealand starts into action in the 19th century. What happened each generation? And then you can try and extrapolate that. Now, it could be done any number of ways, but at that time, the future's... Uh, groups were starting to operate around the world. There were several. And there was a particularly influential uh, group that was really doing more research for the uh, state, the RAND Corporation in America. And all of those thoughts suggested let's bring together a few people apart from the Planning Council but with a specific role of trying to envisage the future. That's really how it began. And much, not necessarily, but a little to my surprise, um, the National Party opposition, of which I was secretary, secretary of the caucus, because I was out of parliament at that stage, they accepted both the Planning Council and the Commission for the Future. What they did not accept were additions that I wanted. I wanted a population commission because you could not do any significant planning in a place like South and Otago because they had no basic population data system. We simply didn't know what was there, what it was doing. If you took the simple farm population on which the whole economy rested, we had no idea how it was composed, what its educational status was, what its... Uh, uh, future was, when would they retire, how would farms transfer, would the single farm, family farm remain the, the norm and so on. And so the thought was to do a lot more work on a regional basis and that a population commission was essential for that because the statistics department really had no capacity to take the, uh, the um, censuses and develop them. Now, you could have put that into the statistics department as a possibility. The other thing that was very obvious then, that resources were going to become very uh, difficult. And one of the main ones was water. We just had the uh, interna first international water conference. Now, in Southam, though it looks water-rich, and it is, it wasn't actually water-rich in terms of use. They were beginning to run short for industrial purposes. So my immediate thought was, particularly with all the um, kerfuffle over the hydro systems, that we should develop um, valley authorities like the Tennessee Valley Authorities for the Clutha, for the Waitaki and the Waikato, so as to encompass, as it were, the whole range of interests and needs of a valley, of a water water resource like a river. I mean, Muldoon was happily talking about the Tlutha as white gold. And it's true, it is. Uh, but 
how do you use it? So these were all thoughts that went into that a very quite um, intelligent group of people in the mid 70s, but they didn't pick up those other ones because they involved political issues that were quite difficult to absolve. Uh, and which they didn't really address. In politics, the big problem is to get people to focus in the run of the river. The political river, as you know from the civil service, is running at a regular rate. And it speeds up, it slows up, it runs into rocks, it runs into narrows, it runs... It, 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 there's a complete distortion of the thinking process. It's like a rugby match. The whistle blows and the game is on. And you can't really stop to pick up. That all makes sense? It, yes. So this is the idea that you try and establish institutions slightly separate from the political and civil service systems to do a little bit of forward thinking. Now, here's a, an apologia. Once you become a minister, you simply do not have time to manage something like a planning council or a commission for the future. And the deficiency, uh, and my stars tell me that I'm an initiator and not necessarily a, a developer, a maintainer, mm -hmm. I did not put the time that I should have into trying to oversee and nurture Planning Council and certainly the Commission for the Future. I basically blame myself for the Commission for the Future going off the rails on the security issue do you and want the to, inducing Muldoon to dump it. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh, we will. We can at some point, mm. yeah. Mm. Because the, it happened just as the mm. Commission for the Future, because Jim Duncan was a brilliant man, and he understood, and as a scientist, he was interested in the longer term stuff. Uh, he understood what it was about, and it was beginning to get into the realms where, as he showed in the, uh, the new The Futures Trust, invaluable work for the nation. But neither he nor I really saw that the young folk, who took it on themselves to rewrite the nation's security policy, were not only running counter to um, government policy, but were intruding on it without responsibility, without authority. Just uh, I certainly had no chance of saving it. It was just quite impossible. So, if I was to understand um put in my words. So what really happened was, if you like, young, innovative, highly energy yes. ridden people rode their own hobby horse. With yeah. under the umbrella of the Commission for the yes. Future. Yeah. And it and it basically It led. went off track. Mm. It went beyond its brief. Mm. Yeah. And which they didn't understand. Now, if I were doing it again, yeah. I should have put a lot more time as the minister, initial, the initial minister but once Muldoon, when I was Postmaster General and Minister of Broadcasting, I did have some time. But once I became a uh, Deputy Finance, I had no time. I simply could not, and I, from my memory, and I can't tell you when, he put another minister in as sitting on the Commission for the Future. There was always a minister there, but of course they had very little to do with it. And none of the ministers that I know of put any time at all into it. Now, my, uh, my response now is, I would have put the Commission for the Future into a government department, preferably the Treasury, because their opposition to bodies outside is so endemic, it's so powerful. Unless you, unless you carry the Treasury, you can't really get very much done in our system. And they have this hugely negative capacity. We haven't the money. It's the most powerful and one of the stupidest statements. It, it's all right when your husband says it to you. But, <laughs> not, 
when the Treasury right. says it, you <laughs> don't believe them. Mm -hmm. It isn't true. Mm -hmm. But that is the device they use to stop something they, they don't want done. And it's usually they don't want done because they haven't done the planning. So my answer to that is to bring a planning mechanism into the system, as I put out and I tried to put mm. in that note. Right. And it's not, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, talking of this directly from experience, both in the government as a finance minister working with the Treasury, and then over many years since trying to influence government decisions, I'm trying to do it at the moment. And it is almost impossible mm. to get a minister to look at a project if the Treasury is opposed.